Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Edo and its expansion, Edo Expansion 1, which is perhaps not the cleverest of expansion names, but it certainly does what it says on the tin. Now, I'm doing this run through today for Kevin Rodkey, who was one of my Kickstarter backers. Kevin, hope you enjoy this. Let's jump right into it. Oh, actually, before we jump right into it, I should say, I'm going to do this kind of differently. The main gameplay run through I'm going to do is going to be just pure raw Edo. I will not have any of the expansion stuff in it. If you already know Edo and you're just here to learn about the Edo expansion, you can go on ahead and hit the button that's on screen or follow the show notes to my extended run through where I will continue playing the game I'm about to start, but I'll also turn on the, um, the shrine and Emperor Quest and Ronin modules so you can find out how those work in the extended in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, and if you're still here, let's start playing Vanilla Edo. Okie doke. Now, I'm going to be playing this as a two-player game today, as always. And it's going to be me and my wife, Jennifer. I am the green player. Jen is the purple player. And there's a couple things you have to do as part of setup. As a two-player game, I'm using the two-slash-three-player board. You flip it over and you've got a different layout for four players. And also, because I'm doing the two-player, I have to randomly block off some sections of the map. At the beginning of the game, there are, in fact, two forests where you can get wood, two quarries where you can get stone, and two farmlands where you can get food, you know, all the, this, these, this rice. But one of them has been randomly gotten rid of. So in this game, this is going to be the only farm we can use. This farm up here, uh-uh, it's gone. And what is it? This stone quarry is gone, and this forest is gone. Completely disappeared, camouflaged, if you will. And also, at the beginning of the game, Edo, which is, you know, what will someday become the capital of Japan, what will someday be, grow up to become Tokyo, right now it's just a little tiny fishing village, Edo uh, gets a randomly selected Edo tile that determines how many points you get, or I'm not sorry, points, how much money you get for having a majority of buildings in there. And there are three other towns, only two of which will be active in this game. So you can see this one over here, this one is disabled. It's got just a blank thing here to indicate we cannot build in this town. We're only building in these two. And also as part of setup, each of these gets their own randomly selected indicator that tells you what your having an area majority in that town will do for you. Let's see. And is there anything else as part of setup? Yes, there is. Before the game starts, in reverse turn order, players have to set up their own specific concern. Because in this game, what's happening is the uh, Emperor of Japan wants our help. We're rich nobles who are interested in moving and shaking the Chinese socio-political theater. We are have a lot of money and we have a lot of resources at our beck and call. We have a lot of workforce and it's our job to help the Emperor get Edo itself to grow up to become the capital. Um, and the more we please the Emperor, the more we build the infrastructure of Japan, the more he is going to reward us with sweet, sweet victory points. As, as he does, I'm sure. Uh, let's see. Anyway. So, before we start though, everybody starts with 20 bucks, three food, which you use to pay your samurai, and we also get to do two things. In reverse turn order, so Jen's going to go first. Jen can either take one of her, her buildings, these are the main buildings we're building to get points over the course of the game, and can build it either in this town or this town. Not this one because it's cut off and not Edo because we can't start out in Edo. So Jen, now Jen could either get the first spot in either one of these towns. You can see it's kind of a circular thing. This is the first place you can build. This is the best spot in town. So Jen could grab either of those, or instead, she could opt to get one of these care packages. Three more food, two stone, two wood, a, a wood um, and a stone, or 10 bucks. So it's Jen's choice, and then I'll take one, and then Jen will get to go again, and then I'll get to go again. And if there were more players, you know, we'd all round robin until we, everybody has gotten one building on the board and one of these care packages. Now, Jen's first. I think she is going to get her first um, building built for free, and that gives her one point. Every one of these built gets a point. And Jen has jumped in here because in this town, if you are in this town alone, you get 14 bucks every round. But even if you're there with somebody else, as long as you are in the lead, you get nine bucks. And whoever's in second place gets five bucks. And what that means is, you know, if I eventually build in this town, say, 
Um, Mu Jin was making 14 bucks. Now she makes nine bucks because even though we're tied, we each, we have equal shares of land in this town. Jen is in the, you know, whoever's furthest up the wheel breaks the tie. So by coming in here, Jen has basically stamped a foot down and ensured she's going to be, um, you know, hopefully making a lot of money out of this town. And so now it's my turn. So I could go on ahead and, you know, I could go on ahead and build my building here. I could build it over here. Oh, but I'm not going to build a building right now because Jen can't build another. So if Jen got first dibs on where to put her building, that means I get first dibs on which care package I want. Let's see. What do I want? What do I want? What do I want? Oh, I'm tempted just to get food because you run out of food so fast in this game. It just, you know, it just goes so quick. But I think I'm going to take the stone. Yes, yes, that's what I'm going to take. So I'm going to take two stones. And so now I'm starting out with... Uh, Three food, like everybody else, and two stone. Now it's Jen's turn. She can't place another building. She's already placed her building, so now she gets the other care package. And of course, if we were playing, you know, full, uh, you know, full complement of gamers, all of these things would end up going. If um, you're playing five, because the expansion lets you go up to five players. But I think Jen is going to take the food because she never wants to go hungry. All right. And so these ones, these are all out of the game. Nobody took that or that or that. And so now it's the last one. And so now I am going to build a building. And so I could build over here, because that means I would be the only one in this town and I'd start making eight bucks. But here's the thing. If I'm making eight bucks in this town and Jen is making 14 bucks in this town, then Jen is coming out like a band. She's making six more bucks than me every round. I don't think that's good. So instead, I'm gonna build over here with her. And so I've got a point now as well. And the reason for that is now, Jen's not making 14, she's making nine and I'm making five. So there's only a spread of four bucks. If I built over here, it'd be a spread of six. Jen would be making two extra bucks over me. And so it's interesting, um, you know, every time you play, you're gonna get random of the uh, random tokens indicating. And sometimes you'll get tokens that actively encourage you to build next to each other like this. Sometimes you get ones that actively encourage you to build as far away as possible. It's actually a really, really cool element that helps part of, you know, the, the variable setup of the game. But anyway, so I built in there. And so we are both in this little town now and we're all set up, ready to go. So let's start playing. Now, I, oh wait, oh wait, no, no, there's one more. As the first player, the last thing that happens is this is the trader. Uh, this is like a wandering trade house. Uh, it's got all kinds of stuff for sale. And I have to put him as the first player in one of the three river zones. Now, if I were in this town over here by myself, I'd probably put him over here next to my town so he'd be farther away from Jen. But since we're both over here, I'll go on ahead and put him, you know, so he's kind of equally close to both of us. We'll both benefit from him. Depending, because that depends on what orders we're going to give. And now that the game is ready to start, that's what this game is all about. This is a very interesting game. It's, a, it's kind of a programming game because what we're going to do now in secret at the beginning of every round, each player will choose three actions they're going to do. And then we reveal those at the same time. So it's very much like a, uh, a robo rally kind of thing, but as a Euro style resource management game. And how we you know lock in our orders is everybody starts with the same three order cards. And each one of these these cards has four potential orders that we could give. And so if I take this card and I put it down like this into this slot, this means it's the first action I'm going to do and the action is going to be harvest food. Or my first action would be pay some food to hire another samurai because at the beginning of the game players start with five samurai. Oh, whoops, I forgot. When we built in that starting village, that means we both put Forgot as part of setup. Once each of us has one samurai in that town. Our other four samurai, they stay off the board. These guys are administrators. These guys are kind of like worker placement guys because I use them in sort of a worker place in combination with placing my orders. When I set an order, if I say this is the first thing I want to do, I have to put one of my administrators, or in this case, I could put two administrators if I wanted, and that means I will do this action twice or once or not at all. You know, I might just be bluffing out somebody, who knows? I might not have enough administrators to do that action. The samurai I put on the board though, he's the guy who actually gets stuff done. Because what it means is, if say I wanna put a guy here and I wanna do the trade action, you'll notice it's got an icon of an admi a little white one and the gray one. The white one is your administrator. The gray one is the samurai who works with him. I don't know if you can see that on the static camera there, folks. There you go. So. That means if I want to do this action, I have to have an administrator assigned to the command card and I have to have a samurai out where 
the um, action is going to take place, out where the trader is. So it's a really interesting game of logistics trying to match up what your workforce does in your administration office and what they actually do out in the field. But anyway, so we have to secretly plan. We're going to choose three actions from the 12 we have total. And you know, in a nutshell, the actions you can do are you can harvest to get more food, you can harvest to get more wood, you can harvest to get more stone. But to do those things, your little samurai has to truck all over the place to get over to the stone quarry or the, or the forest or the farm so that he can manage the local workers so you get your stuff and that costs you money to move him around you know alternatively I, I mean another action I could do is I could do this action which uh, gives me a choice it lets me you see this gate icon it means I could take one of my administrators and put them on the board at any of the gates and now suddenly I've got two samurais out in the world so I could have this guy over here managing my quarries and I could have this guy over here managing my lumber yard but then the problem is with two guys on the board I have to pay two guys salary instead of one so you know the more guys I have on the board the more flexibility I have but the poorer I am because these guys will eat me out of house and home so there's a whole bunch of actions I can do, but let's stop talking about actions. Let's actually start doing it. Now, what is my strategy going to be? I have to choose three actions in total. I think, since I'm the first player, you know, I do have an advantage. If I wanted, I think what I want to do is I want to get a building build. I want to be the first player to build a building here in Edo. Because remember how Jen, she has a big advantage by having the first building in this town. I want to be the first person to build in here so I can break ties in this town. So that means... I've got three things I'm going to do. Now, one of them is I'm going to have to gather some wood because I have stone, but I don't have wood. And as you can see, all of the, th the three types of buildings I can, just a regular house, a trading house, or a fortress, all of them require, well, they require money, they require wood, and two of them require stone. Here's like a little summary. Everybody has one of these little cheat sheets. It tells you what everything costs. And when I build a regular house, it's worth one point, a trading house, it's worth two, and a fortress, it's worth three. Now, the interesting thing is the game is over as soon as somebody hits 12 points. So just grabbing a point is a big deal in this game. This is a very, very fast race to get a very small number of points and in the game. Um, you know, easily this game takes place maybe about an hour. Um, Jen and I found as a two-player game. So anyway, so if I want to be the first to build over here, I got to decide, what am I going to build? Now, I, it's not possible for me to get four um, if I had taken the two wood as, as, the, as the opening thing, I could now go up to the forest. I could get three wood, and I'd have enough wood to actually be able to build a trading house. But it would almost bankrupt me because I'd only have five bucks. All right, I'd have five bucks left over because I started with 20, and I'd have to pay 15. So I think I'm just going to try and build a regular one, which means I need two wood and a stone. I've already got the stone. So I think my first action I'm going to want to do is I only get I only, one of my command cards lets me harvest wood. So I'm going to put this one face down and I'm going to put a, what do you call it? A samurai on there. And now this is the administrator who will work in tandem with my samurai out on the board. So that means I'm going to have to move him over here. And the two of them working together will harvest the wood I need to build in Edo. Now that's going to be my first action, but I got two other actions I got aside. Now I know my other action I'm going to want to do is build. And so you see on this card, um, I have the option to build. So, you know, if I say if the last thing I'm going to do, although that's the thing, if Jen tries to build in town, I mean, I want to build before her, but here's the thing. Jen has no stone or no wood, so I know Jen can't beat me, so I think I can, I can be a little bit um, uh, cautious. I mean, I don't have to be cautious. I don't have to build right away because I know I'm going to be able to, because I've got more resources than Jen. So I'm going to put an uh, administrator over here because I'm going to do one build. And you know that means this little samurai, the one guy I've got in the world, he's gonna have to be running around like crazy. Now the last action I can do, so I, I'm for my, my middle action is gonna have to be one of these, you know, through process of elimination. I could pay five bucks to get another order tile. Now, all of these tiles are available, they cost five bucks, and they give you additional options. They all have the same basic actions that you can do with your normal cards, but they are much more powerful, they're much better. And getting one of these really helps kind of define what you're good at. So that might be a nice action. Or I could do a trading action. Since the trader is so close, I could swing by and um, partake of what he's offering. Currently, in this round, I can see the current round and I can see the next round, so I can plan ahead. In this round, I can buy stone for three bucks a pop, or I can pay seven bucks and a wood to get a victory point. And remember, a victory point is a big deal. At the end of the game, 
if you have leftover money, every 50, five zero bucks you have scores you a point. So every dollar is worth one fiftieth of one point. So you can imagine paying seven bucks in a wood to get a point, that's a really good return. You know what, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that the trader is so close and I'm gonna try and, you know, in between everything else I'm doing, and let's see. And so I'll put an administrator on him. And now, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Or I could do this action. Remember, this is the one that lets me um, put new samurais out on the board or lets me move my samurais around. Normally, if I want my samurais to move from location to location, it costs me a buck for every junction I move through. This action lets me move up to two of my samurai for free. So if I had to pay one buck to move my guy up here to get the wood, I could then use this to um, teleport him. Instead of having to pay money to move all the way down to I Edo, you know, which would cost me one, two, three bucks, I could use this command and teleport him down here for free, just like that. And so I'd save a little bit of money. But I'd be giving up the opportunity to go to the trader, and you know, this, this chip is never gonna come up again. I think I am gonna go to the trader. That's what I'm gonna do. Which means I'm giving up the opportunity to get, put more samurai on the board, I'm giving up the opportunity to harvest food, um, and I'm giving up the opportunity to get another one of these tiles. They're all good actions, but I'm gonna do the trader. All right, there we go. And now unfortunately, that means I have a couple of guys who aren't doing anything. Oh wait, oh, yeah, no, one of my guys is up here, oopsie. That means I've got one samurai, one administrator who can't be assigned to anything because remember all these actions require me to have a samurai out on the board. I only have one samurai. So normally I'd be able to, if I had two samurais, I could do the trader action twice because I've got two administrators. So in this mad rush to build in Edo as fast as I possibly could, I am not being as effective and efficient with my administrators as I could be. But that's okay, I'll live with it. Now, while I was doing all of my planning, Jen is doing all of her planning in secret as well. And let's see, what's she gonna do? Let's see, I know, knowing Jen, now Jen's got a lot of food. So one thing that's interesting about her is, Jen can afford to have more samurai running around the world because she's got more food to feed them. So I think she's gonna do this action that lets her get two more samurai on the, it lets her get another samurai on the board. So let's say she's gonna do that and she's gonna you know, assign a guy to it. But now that's one of her three actions. And maybe it'll be her first, maybe it'll be her last. What else is she gonna do? She could harvest food, she could harvest food or lumber or stone still, all those things are available. She could just get some money, she could get five bucks for every, um, the interesting thing is, all right, okay. Now, the interesting, this um, action she's doing, you'll notice, unlike these ones that require an administrator and a samurai, the one she's doing only requires an administrator. So she could do this action three times if she wanted. So like if she puts one here, this action could be to move the samurai out onto the board. And this other one could be to move another samurai out on the board or to teleport the one she already has. So that's actually really cool. So she has no stone, she has no lumber. I think the other stuff she's gonna wanna do is she is gonna wanna harvest some lumber and she's gonna wanna harvest some stone, right? And so there's gonna be an administrator on both of those actions. She doesn't need to harvest food because she's got plenty of food. All right, so she's gonna be harvesting um, some lumber and some stone, and she's gonna be doing this uh, other action twice. So Jen is taking more of a slow road. She's not really gonna get much anything done this turn other than getting a lot of resources, but she's using all of her administrators effectively. Okay, whereas me, I'm just leaving one guy off to the side because he's got nothing to do. All right, so we all do that in secret. We all reveal that we're ready to go, and then in turn order, we start revealing our orders one at a time. I'm the first player, so I'll do it first. Although, before you reveal your order, you have the option to pay money to move your samurais as many times as you want, as far as you want on the board. And since my first action is going to be lumber, I'm gonna to have to pay one buck. Let me turn in a five and get four back. I'm gonna pay one buck to move from my starting little village here up to the forest. Right, and then I reveal what I'm doing, and I, everybody sees I am gathering lumber, and I've got one administrator, and I've got one samurai, so these two guys work together and generate for me, as you can see from this little marker, three lumber. So I just got three lumber. All right, so I've got, uh, I've got three food, I've got three lumber, and I've got three stone. Pretty happy about that. 
Now, the interesting thing is, a reason I want to come here ASAP is because the more samurais who are hanging out here, the less you get. Because it kind of gets, you know, all the workers here can only deliver so much lumber, and the more samurais are here to take the lumber. So if Jin were to come along and try to do lumber now, oh, in fact, actually, well, that's a bit bad bit of luck. Anyway, so I've done my first action. I paid a buck, I moved my samurai up, and I got three lumber because I was the first one there. Now, Jen, and let's get this out of the way. Now, Jen reveals her first action. But before she does, she's kind of sad. She's going to pay a buck. There's ten. Get nine back. She's going to pay a buck to also move her lumberjack up here. And so, unfortunately now, because I'm already here, Jen is not going to get three lumber like I did. She's only going to get two because her first action was doing lumber as well. And she assigned... One samurai to her, one administrator to it. She's got one samurai, so she gets to do the action once. And because there's our, since there's two people here, she only gets two wood. And see, now that's a big part of the game. Trying to anticipate where you think your opponent is going to be. Because, you know, you, you either want to wait for them to leave so you can get a better return, or you want to get there ahead of time so that you can force them to get a, a smaller return, which is basically what just happened. Jen, if she had been smarter, if she had anticipated I was going for that wood, she maybe should have done this action first. That would have been much smarter. Because then maybe I would leave, and I wouldn't hog all the wood, and so she'd be able to get more wood. But... We both did wood at the same time, and that didn't work out well for Jen. Anyway, so continuing on. So I'm going to reveal my second action. Although, before I do, I'm, again, I'm going to pay money. I'm going to pay two bucks, and I'm going to move my samurai one, two spaces down here to river over to the trade guy. And I reveal that I've sent one administrator plus my one samurai to engage in one trade action. Because I've got to be over there with the mer traveling merchant to do it. So, the trade action. Again, if I look down here, this round, the trade actions I can do is I can buy more stone at three bucks a pop, or I can pay seven bucks in a wood to get a point. Like I said, this is a race. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I ended up getting more wood than Jen, so I think I, I'm going to get rid of one of them, and I'll also pay seven bucks. Boop, boop. And I just scored my second of 12 points. I am now very comfortably in the lead. And, um, right, so that was my second action. Now Jen is going to do her second action. She reveals, and um, she shows that she put two administrators on this. And for every administrator she puts on this action, she has a choice. She can use the administrator to move her workers around on the board without having to pay money, or she can move those administrators themselves or actually another one, if she had any extra ones in her supply, out onto the board. Now this first guy is going to move himself out into the world. He's going to come over here. All right? And so that's one of the two administrator actions she did. This is the other action Jen did last turn. And now for the second one, she could put this guy out on the board too. So she has three samurais running around. And, um, but she's not going to do that. She, her second guy, is going to do the other action of moving, samurai, of moving samurais for free. So this guy, and you can move up to two. So Jen will move this one for free over here to the quarry. Because remember, Jen's going to harvest some stone. And while she's at it, she could move this guy. But does she want to? Or does she want to keep him here? Huh. Let's see. Now she could move him over here. And then she'd have two samurais, so she could maybe do a quarry action twice. But unfortunately, she only has one administrator, so that doesn't do her any good. So, or she could move him, she could move this guy down to here. So the next turn, Jen could build a building down here, and she wouldn't have had to have paid to have this samurai. Well, what would it be? One, two, three, four, five. That's pretty good. Okay. So Jen, her second action was. She um, did the movement, moved this guy for free, moved this guy for free. And so next round, Jen is definitely planning on building a building down in this town. Okay, so now for the final action, I'm going to, before I reveal it, once again, I'm going to pay a buck. So I get, not pay to 10, get nine in change. And I'm going to move my samurai one more time. Remember, you can always, before you reveal, you can pay as much money as you want to move any number of your samurais and the trade guy. You can also move him around anywhere you want on the board. But if you, if you spend too much money, you won't have enough money for other important concerns. So I paid for that. I moved him into Edo. And now I reveal I've got one administrator and one samurai. They are going to work together to build me a building. And looking at this again, I have, I'm going to take one stone and two wood, my, the last of my wood, and I'm going to build over here 
in Edo, and that scores me a third point. So I, it's now three to one in my favor. Okay, and that was my last action. And now Jen's last action, she reveals that she has one administrator working the quarry mines along with this guy. He's all here all by himself, so Jen just got herself three stone. So she's got three stone and two wood now. Ooh, that's interesting. With three, she almost has enough to be able to build a fortress, but that's super expensive at 20 bucks. And she doesn't even have 20 bucks anymore because she's already spent too much money. But anyway, so she's got, she's building up her um, reserves of resources so she can build buildings of her own. Remember, and she's planning on building down here next turn so that she can take control of this town. But anyway, we have now finished the action rounds. Everybody has done their actions, and now we kind of go to round cleanup. The first thing that happens is we have to pay the salary of our samurais out on the board, and they, they get paid in rice. I've got one samurai, I have to pay one rice. Jen's got two samurai, she has to pay two rice. But remember, she started with more, so she's okay with that. All right, so we've each paid um, our rice. Now we get our income, and that's where having majorities in these towns help. Now, we're both in this town, so we're both gonna get Jen's in the lead. She gets nine, and I get five. Um, so Jen gets nine bucks, so she'll take a five and two twos. So Jen gets nine bucks for her starting town. And now she's not anywhere else, so she just makes nine bucks. Me, I'm in second place in this town, so I get five, and I'm the only person here, so I get eight. So that means I make a total of 13 bucks, which is very nice. Okay, so there we go. I'm rich, rich, I tell ya. Even though I spent all that money to buy that victory point, I'm still doing quite nicely, because I'm in two buildings, um, or you know, two uh, towns. And so we, we paid our salaries in rice, we've collected our income, and now we just have to do clean up every round. Now we're gonna see that this is what the merchant is selling um, on turn number two, round number two. This tells us about round number three. The first player marker moves over to Jen. She will be the first player on the next turn. And now we can begin, once again, in secret, trying to make our plans, trying to anticipate what our opponent's gonna do, figure out where they're gonna be so we can get there first or we can stay away from it or whatever it might be. I know, I can tell that Jen is clearly gonna build in this town, which is great for her because it means she's gonna be making eight bucks. Here's an interesting thing. If Jen were to move into this town, currently by myself, I only make eight every round. If Jen moves into Edo, I will start making nine. So I'll actually get an increase, but Jen will be making three. So that's really interesting. Um, you know, it's an interesting choice for her to build in Edo. Now, one thing, if you, if you have not built at least one building into Edo, by the time the game is over, you would lose. Everybody has to contribute at least one building. But Jen's got plenty of time for that. She's definitely gonna take control over this, and that's gonna make her top, heck, maybe she'll try to build both, because she's got more resources, and she's got more samurais. Although with only two wood, She'd have to come all the way back up here to get wood. Although, remember, that now the new market is out, Jen could buy wood for only two bucks. So Jen could buy enough wood to be able to build a building in this town and in Edo, or maybe even two. Or, with five wood, she could actually build a trade house. Or, she could finish getting enough stone Ah, oh, she's got a lot of options. But anyway, me, what am I gonna do? Well, I don't know, I haven't even thought about that yet. But if you'd like to find out, you can hit the button that's on screen or follow the show notes where we will continue playing this game and we will start introducing building um, the uh, temples, build, or, you know, dealing with the requests of the shogun or the, the samurai or the emperor and um, dealing with the Ronins who also wander around and cause us trouble. So if you'd like to watch that, see how the expansion works, hit the buttons on screen uh, in five, Four, three, two, one.